Hi, my name is Kevin and I collect old irons. In past videos we've covered most of the major categories of old irons. Today we're going to cover what is quite a minor category. It's a category that might be represented by three or four specimens in a typical collection. Nobody specializes in this category. Indeed, if you go through the books, you'll find that there's no chapter to this category and, and whatever photos there might be are going to be scattered about. This category actually, as far as I can tell, doesn't even have a formal name. So let's coin one. The category in question here is not applied to any particular use or technology, but to a basic design. And what I'd like to do as a start here is show you a couple of end members. One that's quite primitive, then a couple of three that are more modern. And let me reach over here and pull this iron out. I got this at a Dave Irons auction a year or so ago. It has very much an iron base to it. it, has a very long handle. This is wrought. The auction listing and Dave Iron's description is that this is a sleeve iron. Whether it actually is used for sleeves or something else, I can imagine it perhaps being used for the, the sales of boats, perhaps. There is one. And here is another. This is much more recent. Uh, this one, unusual for the irons of this category, actually has some markings on it. This is the Tommy iron with 1921 and 1922 patents made in St. Louis, USA. Uh, has a very definite iron back with a handle that sticks straight to the rear with a stand. So what we're talking about here again is a group that really doesn't have a moniker, doesn't have a name applied to it. With various thought given into this, I decided that the best name that fits to all members of the group is a rear handled iron. That is a handle that sticks out from the, the back or maybe the, the rear portion of the top with the handle being well behind the iron itself. The handle is not above the iron, the handle is to the rear. And let's just say a little more about these electric irons. I have another example here. This is the Caloric. Caloric is a European company, although they have offices around the world, including one in Miami. This one has the European plug and a bit rounded on the bottom, maybe a polishing iron. I assume used for fabric, but perhaps it could have been used for other things as well. The Caloric company does a lot of kitchenware, appliances, vacuum cleaners. It's been in business since the 1930s, so this is probably an iron from the 1930s or 1940s. And I have here another example showing another use for these electric irons with rear handles. This is a hat iron and again electric probably from the 1920s or 30s. The rear handle irons have many uses. The various irons we're talking about here are not necessarily evolutionarily related. Again, we're talking about the general configuration rather than anything more specific than that. And since we just illustrated a hat iron, let's talk about some hat irons here. There are quite a number of hat irons that are rear handled and they usually don't, aren't as widely collected as the, as the tollickers and the brim irons and so forth that we saw in the men's hat video some while ago. Um, here is a hat that would presumably go around the bill or around the crown of a hat. Here's another one. These things, again, many different styles of hats, and there are quite a number of different styles of these things um, from the late 1800s to early 1900s. Here is another. Um, this one looks like it might actually be, be handmade, homemade. Uh, interesting little point to it and some interesting markings on this. And again, I'm assuming this is probably used for hats. The, uh, the hatters oftentimes did have irons of their own construction. And here are a couple. This is a European design. They may well have been made and marketed in the United States as well. Uh, this is a slug iron. The, both of them have different kinds of doors on the back. This one goes up. 
this brass door goes out and there's a slug inside and I'm not sure exactly how they were used whether they were used this way or used this way and I'm assuming that these would reach in and do some some work on the insides of hats for values uh, these irons here go for 20 30 40 50 dollars and the irons I have here I paid in the 60 or 70 dollar realm again not highly sought after and thus the prices are relatively modest the rear handle irons are multiple purposes and these irons may have been actually used in different ways or or again some are sleeves some are hat uh, some are used for for other purposes let's take a look at this iron here this iron is an of a general style that we would call either a hat iron or a polishing iron it has a stippled or rough bottom to to emphasize or concentrate the weight for for polishing collars and so forth or the brims of hats as well this particular one has a hole in it and it may have been actually towed along a conveyor belt in an industrial operation so a rear handled hat or polishing iron uh, the general style is from the Mahoney company of New York but there are many companies that imitated this style and here is an iron from Europe probably France again a rear handle what this has, it has a stippled bottom used for polishing. This is part of a group of polishing irons from France and Europe. Usually has a handle on the top. This one is rear handle. And this is, again, something we don't see in the United States, but you see a lot of in Europe. And this general group is avidly collected. In, in Europe, people chase these things the way we chase fluting irons in the United States. So a interesting group and this is an interesting rear handled member of that group there is also a range of rear handle irons with longer handles for the insides of sleeves these are essentially flat irons which are heated on a small stove most of those that I have seen at recent auction listings are identified as European but this is definitely American marked on the top is the C in a shield trademark for the Colebrookdale foundry in Pennsylvania here is another sleeve iron probably European this is the overhead view the iron itself is at a lower level in the handle this went for two hundred dollars values for these are all over the place they might be passed that is to say no bidders at one auction or go for very little ten twenty dollars and then sell for one or two hundred dollars at another here is another rear handle iron that I really wanted at the most recent auction this is an unusual sleeve iron of fair size about a foot long with a stand it sold for five hundred dollars this goes to show that the especially interesting and unusual items and this goes for a lot more than just old irons can have a higher value no matter what the category again these irons are quite diverse what I have here is three small rear handle irons I think these were used for fabric they have a teardrop shape they are, have a depressed top this one would be used for polishing it has a rounded bottom the other two have flat bottoms these were probably edge irons that is being used on the edge of a shirt and working your way in between the buttons perhaps for for delicate clothing and so forth and the heating source and I'm not sure precisely what the heating source may have been it may have varied was probably a burnable flammable fuel it could be liquid or it could be a manufactured solid fuel such as metafuel so these would be uh, fired up and then and then used to um, do the details on that shirt and then put out and used again perhaps for the next shirt interesting not worth a lot of money uh, 10 20 30 dollars so these are interesting they're unusual they don't sell for very much because again as a group they're not avidly collected exactly how they were used exactly where they were used is oftentimes uncertain to us and that is one of the qualities of this category and one of the reasons why uh, you don't see any detailed presentation I think in the books here's another one and this was sent to me by Richard Gillis my my dear friend the late Richard Gillis I should say add. Um, 
this is it almost it's not a knife edge though it's sharp on the on the sides it has a brass top it's hollow on the inside rear handle and how was it used what was it used for I'm not sure it has a little hole here and I think that that hot maybe steam water was inserted here and came out a little hole in the front and this was used for some process of smoothing a fabric I think of some type well we've already seen some rear handled hat irons there's another group used for hats or other purposes as is true for the rear handle irons in general uh, this is in its original box and these things for some reason tend to be in their original boxes these are these are travel irons very tight fit here this is the McDonald rotary hat iron you can actually turn this thing around be very good for getting into your hats and so forth these not very rare um, generally sell for the best part of a hundred dollars or so um, oftentimes in very good condition oftentimes in the box these were used by the traveler and let's remind ourselves these travelers in the late 1890s early 1900s using very fancy expensive hats that might have taken some wear and tear and travel and need a little bit of repair work before you're going to go out and sell your wares and this one is the most common of this particular group but I've been watching a number of these things coming up at re recent auctions. Uh, here's one. Um, this one has, uh, again, all of these have a hole in the back so that you could, you could put them onto one of the natural gas nozzles. Here's another. These are from various of the recent auctions and they tend to go for being a little more unusual, 100 to 200 or maybe a little more than that. And it's always been a little bit higher than I can justify with all the other things that I'm, I'm watching these auctions. I'll get some in due course. Those are basically the irons that I have in that rear handle category here and with pictures to show you. There are other irons that are rear handled that I'm not going through here because they really belong to large categories in their own right. We have seen the ball irons uh, previously in our, in our millinery irons. And there's also some um, hand goffers, also known as poking sticks. I only have one here and I'll, I'll show it now because I don't know if I'll have an opportunity to get into this group in any detail. These things go back hundreds of years in Europe. They tend to be very handmade and quite expensive. They typically go for more money than I can justify. Our emphasis here is irons in the, in the European to North American experience, but there are quite a number of interesting rear handled irons elsewhere in the world. I'll show you a couple three here. Each of these would be worth maybe a video to, their, to themselves, but I don't know if I'm going to get to them. Let's take a look at the picture here. This is an Egyptian foot iron. It is extremely heavy. It has, a, it has a weight that can be pulled off of it. The Egyptian tradition, I think these are used elsewhere in Africa as well, is that you put it on the table and you put your, your foot on it, and you move it around with your foot on it, and it apparently does a very good job. And I will post a couple of videos on these if you wish to know more about them. I have seen one at auction for about $200. Again, it's well outside of my own collecting limits. And I have... Here, a representative we've seen earlier, this is for the Oriental pan irons, and this is my, my one representative to show off, a huge group. It goes back hundreds and hundreds of years, at least in China, and some of them are, are quite rare and can be valuable. This one is Indonesian. Uh, this one here is an iron that is uh, sold recently at an auction for $200. This one is Japanese. The lid can be opened and you can put some some coal into it and there's also quite a number of Chinese styled irons as well each country has its own particular um, designs and diversity and with that we have introduced ourselves to one of the, those outlier categories that that nobody has a great deal of specimens at hand or much knowledge but it certainly shows us 
an aspect of the iron collecting tradition. Thank you.